Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the basic smart hair settings as well as textures and basic parameters. The hair we're going to use here is embedded by default so you can test it yourself without the need to purchase any additional assets. There are some new texture maps that are now available to generate more realistic and detailed looking hair. With these new maps you can separately modify the base color, root and end color as well as the highlight color and reflection. Combining all these together allows us to create unparalleled detail and depth in our character's hair, not to mention an infinite variety of style combinations. Let's get right into it by taking a look at the shader settings section in the materials tab. Here you'll find three new texture maps have been added, the flow map, the root map, and the ID map. The flow map provides customization of the way the hair flows, enabling us to generate much more accurate reflections on particular parts of the hair for a more realistic result. You can see how a flow map enhances the reflective properties in this example here. Next we have the root map. This is used for adding additional definition to the root and tips of the hair. By utilizing this texture map properly, you can achieve unique styles like the ones shown here. We have a separate tutorial that goes into more detail on this, so check that out as well. Finally, there's the ID map. This map allows us to adjust the dyeing for each piece of hair mesh separately. We also have a separate tutorial on this. You can use this map to add more depth and variety in the hair instead of the previous flat and simple design of previous versions. Let's spend the next few minutes exploring the basic parameters in the parameters section. The first option you'll see is to flip the tangent map Y. This influences the tangent and flow map which changes the positioning of the reflective properties of your hair as you can see here. There is also an AO map occlude all lighting which simply enhances the AO map effect. Generally, when you have this active, your overall hair color is going to get darker as your scene lights will have slightly less effect. The first slider on the list here is the diffuse strength. What this generally does is strengthen the diffuse color of your hair. With hair roughness map strength, you can set the overall roughness value of the hair. If you want the hair to look oily, then you want to start by decreasing this value. This value can be combined with specular strength to create anything from shiny luxurious to dry and bland hair appearance. There's a specular mask map that you can use to further customize the area with specular highlights which we'll talk about in other tutorials, but for now we can look at indirect specular as well, which is a slider that strengthens or weakens specific areas of specular highlights as opposed to the overall value. Specular highlights are the shiny reflective areas on the surface of the hair. When you use the indirect specular slider, you can enhance and sharpen these specific areas. You can see the results as we adjust this slider value here. Next in the parameters list is transmission strength, which essentially simulates the visual result of light through the strands of hair. You can increase this value to create a more glowing sort of dreamy effect on the hair. Finally at the bottom we have lit backface. This is an important value for adding depth to your overall result, as it will individually highlight strands of hair in low light situations. This is particularly useful for beard content as you can see here. In the low light situation from this angle, the individual strands aren't as noticeable and sort of blend together. However, if we increase the lit back face value, they will become more noticeable, which is a better simulation of how it would realistically interact with this lighting scenario. Below the basic parameters is a section for the general base color, which also uses something called vertex color. This allows for a more layered appearance for the entire base. If we adjust this value, you can see that the layered effect gets stronger or weaker. You can adjust this vertex color as well to adjust the layering results to your preference. You can see the result here as we change the vertex color. With the new hair mesh, each vertex is assigned a color value with external 3D tools for determining the layer of each hair mesh. This is the red channel value, which goes from 0 to 255. The base color in iClone only affects vertex colors under a value of 255. You can create some very unique looks by customizing this value, not to mention it adds another dimension of depth to your end result. That's it for part 1 of our hair shader tutorial. In part 2 we'll discuss other details and parameters that allow for even more in-depth customization of your hair result. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.